What kind of chemical reaction is this? Or this? Or this? A chemical reaction is anything that causes a change in the chemical composition of a substance. There are signs you can look for, like a color change, or bubbles of gas released. Some reactions are dramatic, like fires or explosions. But other chemical changes take a long time, like how the remains of plants and animals that lived millions of years ago slowly change into fossil fuels. These are different types of reactions, and it can be helpful to know what type of reaction it is, to have an idea how long it's going to take, or to predict what the products of the reaction will be. Chemists typically classify reactions into five basic types. Synthesis, decomposition, single displacement, double displacement, and, everyone's favorite, combustion. Some of these types of reactions can be split into further categories. For instance, precipitation reactions are a specific kind of double displacement reaction. So are neutralization reactions, when an acid and base react and cancel each other out. Today, we'll learn how to classify reactions, to recognize their general forms. This also lets us predict the products of some reactions. You'll see. We'll pick a real-life example for each type of reaction. If you learn these examples, you'll be able to recognize when a less familiar reaction is actually a similar type of chemical change. If you're studying for a test about the types of chemical reactions, we have a practice test for you, complete with an answer key with explanations, available for purchase on our website, Socratica.com. Synthesis reactions are also known as combination reactions. They involve the combination of two or more simpler chemical reactants into one larger, more complex product. The general form of a synthesis reaction is A plus B yields AB. Here's our rather surprising real-life example, rusting. Well, it was surprising to me. I don't know about you, but I always thought of metal rusting as being kind of a breaking down. I was wrong. It's actually a kind of building up. A metal reacts with oxygen and forms a new compound that's a combination of the two elements. Our example reaction is iron rusting. Iron reacts with oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. Just as a side note, this rusting process happens in the presence of water, which allows for easier transfer of electrons. So one way to prevent rust is to keep your metal dry. Do you recognize the general form of a synthesis reaction here? Iron is A, oxygen is B, and iron 3 oxide is AB. The balanced chemical equation is 4Fe plus 3O2 yields 2Fe2O3. Not sure how we balanced this equation? We have a couple videos to help. One that teaches the inspection method of balancing chemical equations, and one that teaches the algebraic method. You should watch them both and see which method works best for you. You can find the links in the description below. The decomposition reaction type is the reverse of the synthesis reaction. A compound is broken into smaller pieces. You may also hear this reaction type called an analysis reaction, because one way you can analyze a compound in the lab is by breaking it up into its components. Generally, since you're breaking bonds, decomposition reactions require an input of energy, like heat or electricity, but there are some exceptions. The general form of a decomposition reaction is AB yields A plus B. An example of a decomposition reaction is the electrolysis of water to form hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The word electrolysis should remind you that it takes energy in the form of electricity to lyse, or cut, the water into its components. The balanced chemical equation is 2H2O yields 2H2 plus O2. Another real-world example you might have going on in your medicine cabinet right now is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. This happens slowly, without the input of energy. You can speed this decomposition process up if you warm up the hydrogen peroxide, or leave it out in the light. That's why hydrogen peroxide comes in dark brown bottles. 
When you buy a bottle of hydrogen peroxide at the store, you'd like to be actually buying hydrogen peroxide, and not just a bottle of water. If your hydrogen peroxide has been sitting in your medicine cabinet for a few years, it's probably time to replace it. The balanced chemical equation for this decomposition reaction is 2H2O2 yields 2H2O plus O2. Single displacement reactions can be recognized by a kind of swapping that takes place. One ion trades places with another. They can be two cations, positively charged ions, or two anions, negatively charged ions. The general form of a single displacement reaction is A plus BC yields AC plus B. Here you can see that A and B swapped places. It's common to see single displacement reactions when you put metals together in an aqueous solution. So for instance, if you put a piece of copper into a solution of silver nitrate, over the course of a few hours, the copper and silver swap places. The balanced chemical equation is 2AgNO3 plus Cu yields CuNO32 plus 2Ag. But how do you know that they will do that? What if we started with a copper 2 nitrate solution and stuck in a bar of silver? Would the swapping still take place? No, no reaction. We use a metal activity series table to predict whether one metal will displace another. This isn't something anyone would expect you to reason out. This is a table of data that was experimentally determined. In general, a metal higher up in the activity series will be able to replace a metal lower down. So you can see copper will replace silver, but not the other way around. You can find this kind of information in your textbook, but to make it easier for you, we've made a free handout that you can use when you solve these kinds of problems. It also has a summary of the solubility rules, which I'll explain when we get to precipitation reactions. Visit Socratica.com to get your free handout. We'll include a link below. Now, we've been talking about metals doing this kind of swap, and you should know that some single displacement reactions don't involve metals. For example, the halogens are known to take part in single replacements. Like the metal activity series, there is also a halogen activity series. And what makes it easy to remember is it's the same order as the halogens appear in the periodic table. Elements higher up in the column will replace elements below them. So for instance, chlorine will replace bromine in this reaction. Cl2 plus 2KBr yields 2KCl plus Br2. We just saw how in single displacement reactions, one set of ions swaps places. In double displacement reactions, two sets of components swap places. You have two reactants swapping parts to form two new compounds. These kinds of reactions follow the general form AB plus CD yields AD plus CB. We commonly see this kind of reaction when you have two ionic compounds in an aqueous solution. Very often, this results in the formation of a precipitate. So let's look at precipitation reactions as a specific kind of double displacement reaction. Precipitation is what happens when two ions join together to form a compound that is insoluble in water. This new compound precipitates out of solution. How do you know if a precipitate is going to form? That's when you'll pull out your table of solubility rules. Again, you can find this in your textbook, but we've summarized the rules, along with the metal activity series, on a free handout you can find on our website, Socratica.com. So let's look at a double displacement reaction where a precipitate forms. Sodium hydroxide and calcium chloride react to form sodium chloride and calcium hydroxide. The balanced chemical equation is 2NaOH plus CaCl2 yields 2NaCl plus CaOH2. You can see how it matches the general form of a double displacement reaction. AB plus CD yields AD plus CB. Are either of these products going to be solid in water? Let's look at the solubility rules. Off the top of your head, you probably know that NaCl is soluble in water. But to practice using the solubility rules, here we see that chloride salts are usually soluble. 
except for compounds with silver and some compounds with mercury and lead. So NaCl is not a precipitate, it's in solution. Calcium hydroxide, on the other hand, is insoluble. From the solubility rules, we see that most hydroxides are insoluble, with the exceptions including compounds of alkali metals and ammonia. We can add a downward arrow to calcium hydroxide to show a precipitate is formed, or we could write an S in parentheses to stand for solid. If you use that kind of label, then you'd go through and label the other chemical species with AQ in parentheses for aqueous to show they're all in solution. Now remember, all precipitation reactions are double displacement reactions, but not all double displacement reactions are precipitation reactions. In other words, there are other kinds of double displacement reactions that don't result in a precipitate being formed. Sometimes, instead of a solid precipitate, a gas is formed instead. For instance, an old home remedy for too much stomach acid is to have a little baking soda, also known as sodium bicarbonate. If you combine sodium bicarbonate with HCl, it produces salt and carbonic acid, H2CO, and then the carbonic acid quickly breaks down into water and carbon dioxide. The final balanced chemical equation is NaHCO3 plus HCl yields NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Notice the upwards arrow to show a gas is produced. You can also write it as G in parentheses. Acid-base reactions are another kind of double displacement reaction that doesn't form a precipitate. Let's look specifically at neutralization reactions, when an acid and base react to form water and a salt. So the general form is acid plus base yields H2O plus salt. Writing it this way makes it hard to see the double displacement aspect, so here's the more general form of an acid-base reaction. HA plus BOH yields H2O plus BA. If you write water as HOH, that should help make it very clear which parts are swapping. The classic example is HCl, acid, plus NaOH, base, yields H2O plus NaCl. I want to caution you to not oversimplify this in your mind. In regular life outside the lab, we call NaCl salt, or sometimes table salt but it's not the only salt in the world of chemistry. As an exercise, try writing out the reaction between a different acid and base. Like the acid hydrogen bromide, HBr, reacting with the base potassium hydroxide, KOH. What's the salt formed by this reaction? Combustion reactions involve a substance reacting with oxygen gas, usually releasing carbon dioxide and water. Human beings have a long history of being fascinated with fire, so we're especially familiar with things that can burn. Wood, witches, just kidding. And especially fuels like gasoline or propane that are hydrocarbons. We still use combustible materials in transportation and cooking. You might use a propane grill at home. When you cook on the grill, propane takes part in a combustion reaction. Here's the balanced chemical equation. C3H8 plus 5O2 yields 3CO2 plus 4H2O. The general form of this kind of combustion reaction is hydrocarbon plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. Combustion reactions don't strictly have to have hydrocarbon as one of the reactants. It's just that they usually do. The Hindenburg accident is an example of hydrogen gas combusting. 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. Notice no carbon dioxide is produced here because hydrogen gas isn't a hydrocarbon. It doesn't contain carbon. Hydrogen gas is very flammable. When the Hindenburg exploded, the entire airship burned up in less than a minute. That's why we're not flying around in hydrogen zeppelins anymore. It's very sad. Socratica friends, if you're preparing to take a test on this subject, my best advice is to study what you don't know. And you can figure out what you don't know by taking a practice test. We've made a practice test complete with an answer key available for a reasonable price on our website, Socratica.com. Your purchase helps us make these videos free for the world. Thanks for watching Socratica.